Okay, so hopefully you watched the previous video. That's all about threshold training, dissecting threshold. What does it mean? What are the two different types of threshold training? Aerobic threshold, anaerobic threshold. Some of the comments below raise some further questions around threshold. I really wanted that video to teach most runners that watch it heaps more about threshold. I think it's super obvious that threshold can help your training. I think it's super obvious that if you start incorporating it into your training, you will get better at running. And at the end of the day, that's what you'd like. You'd probably like it because you'd enjoy your training more as you got fitter. You'd probably like it because as you start to race better, well, that's a lot of fun. My problem, I came home from a run, I had uploaded a video on YouTube. It was about threshold testing. I did it at the track and I had comments below. And my, my problem was that I'm gonna upload this stuff on YouTube. Other runners are gonna upload stuff on YouTube and they're gonna talk about this threshold, this holy grail, this amazing thing to do. And I kind of just got pissed off that maybe people don't understand it. Just because I know in my head roughly what's happening when I'm talking about threshold or roughly what's happening to the aerobic system or the body when I'm training at threshold, it doesn't mean that everybody else knows a thing or two or everything that I know about threshold. And so today's video is taking some of those comments on board that came underneath the old threshold video, which is now not old, it's probably about a week old at this point, but it's really going into more detail about how you could start to implement it into your training, how perhaps you'd go about executing some of those sessions to get the absolute most out of your body on that given day and in your next race. And then just to elaborate on some of the sort of details surrounding threshold and, and yeah, to go into a bit more detail, I suppose you could say less about the types of threshold. So that previous video was all about aerobic threshold, anaerobic threshold, the different types and what they mean and how long you can sustain them for. Today is all about the application. How do you apply you, this new knowledge that you have a threshold, you're sitting at home, you want to start adding it to your training, what do you actually do? And that's why I find that this YouTube is gonna be super useful for guys that aren't quite sure, should I add in some threshold training? How would it look? What sort of recovery would I take? What sort of reps would I do? Can I go straight into a full session? Should I break myself in slowly? Should I do aerobic threshold or should I do anaerobic threshold? And we can start to dissect that. And so, the first thing I'd like you to do, if you haven't already, is go watch the video on aerobic threshold and anaerobic threshold. And that's really going into detail about what it all means, how I've applied it to my running career, how it helped me run 209 for a marathon, how it likely got me to the Olympic Games, and how likely it got me from 2005, when I first started using threshold type stuff, all the way to the 209 marathon. That's a super, super important video. I really think you'll benefit from watching that. And based on the comments and based on the feedback, it's a brilliant video and very educational. Today, it's all about how we start applying it. And so I believe the threshold is important every single week of the year, unless you're having a recovery period or a rest period. And then what you can do is just take it out of the program for obvious reasons. Give yourself that week off, enjoy it, do what you want. Now, when you're gonna to start to apply it to your training, the Ingebrigtsens have made this kind of famous to do what you'll see a lot of is double threshold training. I genuinely believe if you're listening right now, you're probably not at the double threshold training bit. You might be, and forgive me if I'm kind of stepping on somebody's feet here, I believe that by doing some steadier runs, so you've got easy recovery run, then you've got steady run, and then you've got your long run, you might find that on a steadier day, towards the end of the run, because your fitness isn't, forgive me, I'm not being like harsh, you're not a 20 year seasoned runner. I'm a 20 year seasoned runner. If I start a steady run at 140 to 145 heart rate and I keep the same speed, let's say six minutes per mile, my heart rate genuinely stays around that area. I can keep it at that sort of like steady intensity. 
If you haven't been running for 15 to 20 years and you've missed training or your training has been a little bit inconsistent, you'll probably find what happens on, for people listening right now, you might even find what happens on your easy run is towards the end of the run, your heart rate starts to drift. It starts to go up, okay? So maybe at the start of the run, it's 130. And then if you hold that same pace, maybe by two or three miles in, it might be at 150. And then maybe if you run for seven miles by the end of the run, it might be up to almost 160, 165. And so when you're talking about threshold, we're not talking about a pace. We're talking about a system that works the aerobic system in a given way based on the effort that you're running at. And so, like I said, if you're very new to running, you might find just by running easy towards the end of an easy run, as it starts to get a bit more difficult, you've already moved into low end of threshold or aerobic threshold. If you've been running for a bit longer and you're not a beginner runner, well, perhaps when you go out the door and you've decided, you know what, I'm not gonna like just jog today. I'm not gonna run super easy. I'm gonna do a bit more of a steady run. If you wanna learn about steady running, I did a great video on steady running. The thumbnail says speed up. Got a lot of controversy, but it's a good video. That'll teach you what a steady run is. If you go for a steady run, again, you might find that trying to sustain that pace, here's what happens with heart rate. When you go out the door, the heart rate can't suddenly jump up to the heart rate that it needs to be. So when you go out the door, your first mile or two, even me, that heart rate might be 10 to 15 beats lower. For me, it's probably five to seven. For you, it might be 10 to 15. As you get going, let's say you go out the door, you go off at seven minute mile pace. That's your steady run pace. That's your speed between easy recovery and perhaps your marathon pace or your half marathon pace. So you're out there, you're running at that steady pace, your heart rate for the first mile or two, absolutely fine. You're not hitting threshold, no problem whatsoever. Then all of a sudden it's a bit windy, there's a few hills, it, it maybe gets a bit warm, and all of a sudden towards the middle to the end of that run, you might already find that your heart rate has gone up to the kind of heart rate that would hit bottom end of aerobic threshold. My aerobic threshold is anything from 155 beats per minute to probably about 164. That's a nine beat spectrum. And at any point of that spectrum, my, my lactate will be roughly the same. And so I can run at 155 heart rate and the speed might be 335 per kilometer. I still hit perhaps one and a half to two millimoles of lactate. Then when I get up to 162, 163, the speed might have increased by 10 to 15 seconds per K but the lactate stays the same. It's a, it's a range, it's not, it's not a given, it's not an exact science, it's not a at 157 heart rate, you're at aerobic threshold. It's not a at 320 per K, you're at aerobic threshold. It changes every single day of the week based on weather, based on nutrition, lots of things, but it's a spectrum. And because it's a spectrum, if you're starting to think about including threshold into your training, you might already have threshold in your training if you're a new runner, literally on some of your easy runs. On some of your long runs in particular, even if the pace is easy, if you're not as experienced and your heart rate drifts on that run, don't be surprised that towards the end of that run, you might have hit a little bit of low end threshold. That's the first thing to think about in this whole sort of system. And so, what the Ingebrigtsons have to do, what I have to do, what perhaps some more experienced athletes have to do is start to include it in our sessions. When I first got introduced to Threshold, I probably started off by doing about 30 minutes per week. And that was every Thursday. What I want you to start doing, first and foremost, if you haven't already, watch the bloody video on aerobic threshold and anaerobic threshold. I want you to start trying to understand what your aerobic and anaerobic threshold paces, heart rates and efforts feel like. Once you start knowing what those paces, efforts, heart rates feel like, the best thing you can do is go get tested, but I understand not everybody wants to pay money on testing and not everybody has the resources to do that. The other thing you can do, it's roughly, anaerobic threshold is roughly the pace that you can run for about an hour. An hour in competition when you're fully trained. When you do Zwift and you do Zwift on the bike, they predict your FTP based on a 20 minute pretty hard effort. 
So Zwift and the scientists are pretty much saying whatever you can produce in your bedroom on a turbo for 20 minutes, one day you'll be able to do for 60 minutes. I'm not going to be that generous, but I'm going to say what you can do for about 30 to 40 minutes in training, whatever sort of speed you can maintain your average pace for 30 to 40 minutes, take that average pace, take that average heart rate and call that, when I say it's a nine beat shift, call that like mid to high. So if you go do 30, 40 minutes in training and you work pretty hard because this is what you can hypothetically sustain for an hour, you almost have to run as hard as you can for 30 to 40 minutes. What I'm going to say now is whatever your average heart rate is, we're going to take that as pretty much your anaerobic threshold. Why I'm saying 30 to 40 minutes, don't confuse this. I know it's what you can do for one hour, but this is training. And because you haven't trained yet, perhaps at this anaerobic threshold, you might not be able to sustain it for one hour right now. So actually, whatever you can do for 30 to 40 minutes, I bet in five to six weeks time of training at that intensity, not only will that intensity get, forgive me, not only will you get better at handling that intensity, not only will the speed of that intensity speed up, you'll also be able to sustain it for an hour. What I'm trying to say here is it's not given. Just because you go out the door and even if somebody told you, hey, Jill, your anaerobic threshold heart rate is 162, okay? If you haven't trained at it and you haven't trained the ability to run at it and you haven't trained the ability to sustain it, you'll go out the door at 162 heart rate and by about 30 to 40 minutes, you will already be slowing down. So that's a little test that I believe you could do and that 30 to 40 minute test will likely give you a fair idea of what your current anaerobic threshold is. And that's called LT2. LT1, we're probably gonna take five to 10 beats of heart rate away from the test that you did for your anaerobic threshold. And we're gonna call that LT1. And you should be able to sustain that for, in a competition, one hour 40 to two hours. But in training, think about it. It might only be 60 to 80 minutes for now. And don't confuse what I'm saying. It's 60 to 80 minutes because we haven't trained it yet. And that's the good part. That's what we're getting to now. Please, if you can, go watch the video. It'll, it'll go into way more detail. Or if you can, Google search right now, lactate threshold training. Sorry, Google lactate threshold testing. A physiologist might be able to help you. That would be really useful. And that would be the best way to start implementing some of this into your training. So let's pretend you're a beginner, you're just getting into training and you wanna add some threshold stuff. The best way to do it is to have a look at your current weekly training. How does it look? Do you track heart rate? Do you not track heart rate? Do you need to buy a heart rate monitor strap so that it's a bit more accurate? Start to have a look on your runs. Is your heart rate drifting? If it's not, and you've started to sort of get it at a stable place, and I don't mean is it drifting because you're running faster. I mean at the speeds that you currently run at, does it drift during the run? If you've learned to stabilize that, and if your fitness has got to a place that now that sits at a much more stable place, well then the best way to start introducing threshold is to just add steadier portions to your run. So let's say you do six miles, let's say you do that four days a week, and you're currently just doing it at the same heart rate and the same speed, 130 to 140 heart rate. What you could start to do is for one to two miles of one of those runs is add in some threshold. You don't really know yet what threshold is, but explore. So go for one to two mile, a bit easier, do a bit of stretching, do a bit of dynamic drills. If you need to learn some of those, go to joggingroom.com. There's full warm ups, full dynamic stretching routines. Make sure your body's a bit warmer. Then do one to two miles, bringing the heart rate up. Maybe this run, bring it up 10 to 15 beats. See how you feel. Can you still hold a bit of a conversation, a three to four word conversation? Hey, Jill, how do you feel? Yeah, I'm doing okay. That's fine. You can't speak. It's not threshold. You've gone too far. Start to build it in. At the end of your week, count how many miles or how many minutes you spent at a rough heart rate that you believe to be threshold. You need to start tracking per week your training and what percentage of that was done at perhaps threshold. 
Week one, you cannot just go out and run every single mile at either threshold, the lower end threshold or the higher end threshold. I would bet as a beginner to intermediate runner, I'm not criticizing. I would bet that your level of control over low end threshold to high end threshold won't be very good. It's just experience, experience and fitness. As you start to, why I'm telling you that is because I don't want you to worry so much about low end threshold and high end threshold because you're not there yet. You might find that there's only a three to four heart rate beat difference between low end threshold and high end threshold, and you might jog up a hill and it's probably gonna go up to that higher end threshold. You haven't done something wrong, don't worry about it. But what we're gonna start to do once you start doing more of this training, once you start adding threshold a bit more into your week and you do it in a nice calculated way, you're gonna bring that level of control. Then hopefully in one to two years time of doing this more consistently, you'll be doing double threshold days and you'll be pushing your race results into a really good place. You think 15 to 20 years ago, I could do double threshold days? Of course I couldn't. Here's the kicker, beginner, intermediate and professionals. If you want to start adding more volume per week at some of these intensities, such as threshold, anaerobic threshold, aerobic threshold, steady runs. If you want to start adding more of this stuff to your training, you, you watching, you're responsible for recovery, foam rolling, good sleep, good nutrition, good hydration. I preach it so much in the run a masterclass. You're accountable. It's that simple. This is on you. If you want to start doing more volume per week at the likes of threshold, anaerobic threshold, all these things, yes, they're going to help your run and move forward, but do they fatigue the body a little bit more? Of course. What if you're not that experienced with threshold running and you run a little bit too hard? That makes the body a bit more tired. Are you going to eat good? Are you going to sleep good? Are you going to work on your hydration to give your body a chance to recover as best as it can? If you're an intermediate runner and you've been doing steady runs, you've been doing hill training, you've been doing interval training, you've raced a few 10Ks, you've raced a few 5Ks, maybe you've raced a half marathon, maybe you've raced a marathon. What you can start to do is add in threshold either side of the current training you already do. Let's say you have an easy day, then maybe you go to the track and you do a session with the club, then maybe you have another easy day, then maybe you've got a medium long run day, and then perhaps on a Friday you do hill reps or you do tempo or whatever you call it, okay? What you can start to do is at the end of each week, calculate currently, like we've done before, how many miles per week are you doing that isn't just easy recovery? Count that number up, figure out what sort of percentage of your week it is. Then what we can do and what I used to do for some of the guys that I coach was, let's say Monday's easy, Tuesday's a session with the club, Wednesday's easy recovery to recover from the session the night before. On a Thursday, as your medium day, before you do your hills on a Friday, for example, you can add in two to three times two kilometers at very low threshold. The kind of threshold that we're talking here is like a kind of marathon pace, but actually a bit slower. And don't worry for now that that doesn't seem loads. Don't worry for now that that seems really easy. It's just another little deposit of fitness in the bank. It's like going to the bank and putting in 20 pounds or $20 every week. At first, you might think this is a waste of time. But at the end of the year, do you still think you're going to think that was a waste of time when all those little 20s add up? So start to add that in. See how your body responds to it. See how your fitness starts to respond and make a note. The other thing you can do is before your session on a Tuesday with the club or perhaps on a Friday, you can add in a little bit of threshold in the warm up. And so towards the end of your warm up, show up to the track a little bit earlier or show up to the grass pitches wherever you do this training. And before you jump into your current session, add in a little bit of threshold. Two times 2K, two times 3K, but don't take it super serious. Warm up seriously eat seriously before the session, but just enjoy it. Don't be so obsessed by the Garmin paces, all that sort of stuff. Just think of this as bonus training. 
If you want to start adding threshold as your main session, some really good sessions to start with would be the likes of 8 by a K, and you do that at kind of a speed that you're probably currently running like your 10K right now, and then that, that's assuming that your 10K is around 40 minutes, perhaps to 70 minutes, and, and maybe even sort of like, actually when I run like 30 minutes around a 30 minute 10K shape, I can almost run a 1K rep at 10K, maybe five to 10 seconds per K, slower than 10K pace, and my body stays at threshold. I am a pretty seasoned runner, but of course the shorter the distance, it's easier to keep the effort at threshold. We already talked about it, as distance goes on, heart rate goes up, effort goes up. And so start to add in things like five to eight times one kilometer, five to eight times three to four minutes, and you're looking at anything from 25 minutes to 40 minutes is a good length of time to be out there. And you can also do things like if you're a beginner or you're an intermediate, you can also do like kind of a fartlek type session. And in that session, you might do 20 times, one minute on, one minute jog. And what you kind of find over the 40 minutes is the heart rate, even though the speed's increasing and then you're, you know, decreasing the speed for the recovery, you actually find that your average sort of speed and your average heart rate, it's not a kick in the ass off thresholdy type effort and why it's brilliant is you can go a little bit faster on the minute on it can kind of be around 5k 10k type pace but then because you're slowing down you stop happening basically you prevent lactate from just going up and up and up and up and up if you're inexperienced with threshold training you might find that if you're doing 2k reps or 3k reps if you go too fast and you start to build that lactate too quickly it will just go up and up and up and up and up. And even with recovery, you won't be able to bring it back down. You find the session really tough. It's not enjoyable. Those little fart legs, maybe you do 10 times a minute on, minute off, and then you progress it to 15 times a minute on, a minute off, and then you can do eight times two minutes on, one minute off. You get to go a little bit quicker, but by taking that rest period, you give your body a chance to just bring that lactate back down. These are also absolutely fantastic as you get closer to race season, because as you get closer to race season, you want to be going a little bit quicker. The Ingebrigtsen's kind of made it famous to go out there and do 25 400s on the track with 30 seconds rest and keep their heart rate and lactate around about that thresholdy anaerobic threshold or aerobic threshold in the morning. They learn by manipulating the recovery and by manipulating the distance of the rep. They didn't do two mile reps, they didn't do three mile reps. By doing 400s, they could go pretty close to race pace for the likes of a 3K. And they were kind of getting the exact same benefit that everybody else was getting doing maybe a two mile rep or a three mile rep, but they were able to run faster. When you run faster, you can teach your body good biomechanics and it's really helpful. And so think of that. What distance you're doing, 400 meter, 800 meter, a mile, two mile, three mile. As you go up the distances, you're going to have to go slower. As you go up the distances, it's more likely that your heart rate will drift and your effort might go above those thresholds. So start to keep an eye on that. Really, really, really start to keep an eye on roughly how much volume per week you think you're doing at threshold or above. And then play around with it. But if you're going to play around with it, and if you're going to try to add more volume, more intensity per week, please, please, please add more recovery, more emphasis on sleep, more emphasis on nutrition. I'm going to leave that there. I hope that's helpful. I can do more videos like this. Comment below. If you've got some questions, I'll get back to you. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know. Give me some love. Like, subscribe, share. Do what you got to do. And I hope we're continuing to give you more knowledge into threshold, how you might include it in your training, how you might sort of like move your training around currently or bend threshold around. There is no one size fits all with this. So try to make it work within your world. Try to make it work within your system. If you want more advice on sleep, recovery, strength training, psychological approach, go to joggingroom.com, check out some of those courses. There is free lectures and that will, when I'm talking about, please, please, please add more recovery and more emphasis around the training, all this little stuff 
I tried to build this masterclass that taught people all the things I do as autopilot that gives me the best chance of handling a full week's training. I wanted to teach that the other people. There's 60 lectures, 12 hours worth of courses on there. Go check it out. I hope you enjoyed today and take care.